What's up everyone? My name is Taylor Nemechek and this is Who's That Saint? Today we're going to be talking about a well-respected man who gave up his luxurious life to go be a missionary in pagan lands. So the saint we're talking about today is Saint Boniface. And the question is, who is Saint Boniface? Saint Boniface, or Winfrith, as he was known for the first portion of his life, was born around the year of 675 in England. And while he was still fairly young, he convinced his parents to send him to a monastery for schooling, because he really admired the monks who had visited his town. And so he learned rapidly here and was really a prodigy for his schooling and education. And so after a while, he had to be transferred to another nearby monastery to further his schooling. Once he completed his schooling, he became a teacher at this monastery, and he quickly became an extremely well-known teacher. But then in his mid-40s, Winforth determined that he wanted to leave all this behind and go do mission work in the pagan lands of Friesland, which is a province in the Netherlands. And it was here that he wanted to join forces with a famous missionary by the name of Willibrod. And so he pestered his abbot and time and time again until he was finally allowed to go to these foreign lands. And in doing this and in making this decision, he was leaving behind an extremely set, successful life. He was an extremely uh, highly respected scholar and teacher and priest, but he wanted to leave this behind to go to the pagan lands. In his mind, Winthroth had this grand picture of how this missionary work was going to go, and he figured it would just be easy and he'd be able to return home with all this glory. But this did not go near as planned. It, things began going downhill from the moment he stepped off the ship in Friesland. Um, when they landed, he heard news that the ruler in Friesland, a man by the name of Radbod, had declared war on the Christians and was destroying the churches and monasteries within that province. And even the famous missionary, Willebrod, he had been driven into exile and the measles that were left of the church had been sent into hiding. So the situation was already much worse than Winthroth could have ever imagined. And he went to this ruler and he made a futile attempt to convince Radbod to let him and his companions preach, but he had absolutely zero success. So with this, he had to just accept defeat and return to England just merely a few months after they had landed in Friesland. Once Winthrith returned to England, he switched his focus to looking at how he hadn't prepared for this previous mission trip. He had kind of naively just gone to Friesland expecting everything to be pretty simple and he had just returned with this glory and he hadn't put any thought or preparation into this. So he wanted to return to the pagan lands, but he realized that first he had to make a trip to Rome. He had made the realization that in Friesland he had had no authority to preach because he didn't have any authority to back him up. So he wanted to go to Rome first and ask the Pope for an official mission with the support of the Catholic Church. And so Pope Gregory, Pope Gregory II, the Pope at the time, was really intrigued with this idea that Winfrith brought to him, but he wasn't completely sure of it. So they spent the long winter months talking about the mission and the ideas that Winforth had. And finally, at the end of the winter, the Pope sent Winforth on a te test mission to Thuringia, which is in Germany. On May 15th, in the year of 1719, we see the first records of Winforth's name change. In the Pope's commission, as Winforth was preparing to leave for the mission, the Pope renamed him Boniface, apparently because the previous day, um, the, that previous day had been the feast day of a martyr that had the name of Boniface. Upon arriving in Thuringia, Boniface realized he was going to need extra help. Missions had appeared in Thuringia before, but he realized he was not going to get any help from the local monks and clergy, and one of the things he had learned in his past mission was he could not spread God's word alone. So he was about to send for help back in England when news reached him that Radbod, the ruler in Friesland from earlier, had died and that Willebrod was had returned to his mission work, so Boniface immediately, immediately traveled back to Friesland. And once he had, uh, um, once he had gotten to Friesland, Boniface spent three years with Willebrod, uh, mainly as a student and learning and being trained in mission work. But he also spent as much time doing mission work and giving to the people as he was learning and helping Willebrod. And once his training was complete, 
Willibrid, who is now in his 60s, wanted Boniface to stay and become his successor, but Boniface felt his call to return to Germany. So, ignore, or not necessarily ignoring, but besides the pleas that Willibrid gave, Boniface traveled to Hesse, Germany. Unlike his other missions, Hesse had never been evangelized, so he knew he was going to need even more help. So he appealed to the Pope again, and during one of his trips back to Rome, the Pope consecrated Boniface a bishop. And upon returning to Hesse, he realized things were going to be challenging. The, the people were attracted to Christianity, but they were holding on to their old religion and so reluctant to just let go and move into this Christian faith. So Boniface knew he had to do something pretty radical um, to get the people to let go. So he called all the people to a display of power. And in this display of power, he approached a massive oak tree that was sacred to the people. And the people had dedicated this oak tree to Thor. And so there is a lot of fear for anything to be done to this tree. And so what does Boniface do? He approaches this oak tree with an axe and he starts chopping down the tree and the people are watching in horror expecting something terrible to happen to Boniface and he just takes the axe one stroke at a time at the tree and finally the tree cracked and the legend says that the tree split into four parts and then fell to the ground in the shape of a cross this had been the display of power that Boniface needed and after this the mission was successful and the people began to come to the Christian faith and so with this success, he returned to Thuringia to finish what he had begun. And knowing that he was going to need help, he called upon England for aid. And for many years, there were many nuns and monks who responded to this call with much enthusiasm. And so with this assistance and with the aid of the Pope, he was successful in the evangelization and reforming the church there in Thuringia. Then at the age of 73, Boniface returned to Friesland to start a new mission. But one day in the year of 754, while waiting upon a group of people preparing to be confirmed, an enemy group attacked Boniface's camp. His companions wanted to fight, but Boniface told them to trust in God and not to fear death for the faith. And he and his companions were martyred that day by that enemy group. So Boniface's story ends where his mission work began, in Friesland. And St. Boniface is known as the Apostle of Germany, with all the work and mission work he did in Germany to help reform and build and give that faith foundation of the church in Germany. And St. Boniface is the patron saint of Germany, Brewers, and World Youth Day. And his feast day is on June 5th. So St. Boniface, pray for us. There's our answer to who is St. Boniface. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something you didn't already know about this great missionary. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on any of these videos or any other videos on this channel. And make sure to check out our videos on Wednesdays and stay tuned for next week's episode of Who's That Saint? We'll see you next time. God bless.